Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home the 6500 watt DEK generator. This one I found on Facebook Marketplace. It was listed only for $100 and according to the seller, it needs a new head. Now, I'm not so sure it does, but it definitely needs some attention. Let me show you. The intake valve on this engine suffered quite a trauma. The pushrod actually wore a groove in this pushrod retainer. And once it did that, it actually allowed the rocker to rotate out of place. So instead of pushing the valve stem, it started hammering the valve stem retainer. And at some point, the engine locked up. It bent the pushrod for the intake valve and it actually broke the tip off the valve stem. So as bad as that is, that actually, I think, saved the engine. It wasn't a clean break. And because of that, the valve can still be closed. But when you go to push it in, it stops due to that damage. And if that hadn't happened, the valve actually would have fallen in the engine. And the engine would definitely be a parts machine. Now, this should be a pretty easy fix. I think the biggest issue here is that the valve spring retainer, some pieces are missing. So I think I'm going to start by trying to retrieve those pieces. I mean, ideally I could do that without opening the engine. So I'm going to get this rocker out of the way. We'll get this push rod guide out of the way. We'll run a magnet down there and see if we can't find the missing pieces to that valve spring retainer. I'd say we're looking for at least two pieces, so let's try to find them. Socket doesn't reach. I'm gonna try to double nut this and maybe get the stud out. coming up empty. So I think those pieces might have worked their way down into the block. So I'm going to pull the drain plug, get the oil out, and I'll run the magnet in the sump, see if I can't find it there.
I've been running that magnet through the engine on and off actually for the last 24 hours and I have not got anything to show for it. There has been at no point any bits of metal stuck to that magnet. So I'm starting to think that I'm chasing something that might not be there. I mean, those pieces are definitely missing, but I know people have been in this engine before me and potentially those have already been pulled out. The guy I bought this from, he actually owns a junk collection company. You know, someone had paid him to take this away and he pulled all those parts out that I showed you at the beginning of this video, but the original owner may have done the same. And obviously I wouldn't have knowledge of that. So, you know, I think I've wasted a bunch of time. Not that pulling metal out of the engine is a waste of time, but I'm not finding anything. So I'm going to move on no matter what that head has to be pulled off and fixed. So I'm going to start peeling the layers off so that I can uninstall that head.
intake valve looks pretty good, at least from this side. It doesn't seem to be bent, and it's actually making a good seal on the seat. So I don't see any reason why this head can't be reused. The cylinder seems to be in good shape. You can see here the intake valve did strike the piston. It's not deep though, it's very superficial. If anything, I think it just took a bit of carbon off. So that should not be an issue. As far as the missing pieces go for the valve spring retainer, you know, I'm, I'm tempted to tear the engine apart looking for those pieces, but you know, I, I'm not so sure they're there. The odds of them being in the engine are pretty slim. As soon as that broke, the engine would have shut down in seconds. And those pieces would have had to travel first past this plate, which it could do. I mean, it could definitely sneak in on the left or right. And once it's passed there, it would be down in these galleys where the push rods are. You know, there is enough room they could definitely drop down further to where the tappets are pushing the push rods. But the entrance to the engine for the oil return, it's pretty small. And it's actually in between these two galleys and quite small. I could see one of those pieces being small enough, one of the missing pieces, uh, but not the other. Let me show you. You're looking at where the push rods go. The tappets are there on the left and right. And that square right in the middle, that is the oil return. That is the really the only place those parts could get into the engine. And it's, it's pretty small. I mean, the total diameter of that hole is probably 3 sixteenths of an inch, if that. This intake valve is going to be an issue. It gets tight right about there and it won't drop on through. So this valve is bent, I'm assuming somewhere right in here. So I already tried taking a little material off the sides. It didn't seem to make much of a difference. So I am going to use the Dremel and just chop it as far down as I can. And hopefully that'll let it drop through. I was a little bit worried about this one. I cut down as low as I could, and I wasn't sure it would be enough. But as it turns out, the valve came right out. So we're looking pretty good. We just need to order five new parts, and we should have a good working engine. I think the only complication here is that the engine on this machine, it is a Honda clone. There is no model number or manufacturer name. Also, the maker of this generator, D-E-K, they're out of business. And I don't think it would matter anyway because they don't have a parts diagram in their manual or parts numbers. Anyway, these parts here, the head gasket, the guide, and the retainer, they're very common parts and fairly standard. So I don't think I'll have an issue there. The push rod length and the size of the valve, they do vary a little bit across the clone. So I'll have to measure that up. It's a bit of a guessing game. It might be a little bit of trial and error. Anyway, we'll get the order placed. I'm gonna get this washed out, get all that metal out of there, and 
turn you back on in a bit. Parts have been ordered. They'll be here in a few days. So I'm just going to use this time to clean up the head. It's actually not that dirty. The carbon buildup is minimal. So I don't think this engine has seen too many hours. Anyway, we'll decarbon this a bit, get this ceiling surface nice and clean, and then do the same on the engine block. Anyway, you get the idea. It's cleaning up pretty well. Gonna work on this area a bit more, and there's still a bit kind of going around here. And to clean this valve, I'm just gonna spin it in the drill and hold some scotch bright to it. That cleaned up pretty well. So I'm gonna lap it real quick. It was making a good seal, so it doesn't really need much. cleaned up pretty well. A good test too is to just drop it in and make sure it doesn't spin. Just push down lightly and turn. If it spins, it's not making a good seal. In this case, it's not budging. So that will make a good seal. Anyway, I'm going to wash this off. Just make sure all the grit is removed and do the engine next.
Going to take a look inside the carburetor. I don't think it's too bad, but I'm not sure. There was fuel in it. You know, when I set it down on its side earlier, a bunch of fuel spilled out. So, you know, I don't think this damage to the valve was recent, and most likely that fuel was not too fresh. So we'll take a quick look. Uh, usually there is a quick disconnect on the fuel solenoid, but that's not the case. It actually goes into a larger harness. So I'm going to remove the solenoid here, and we'll get the carb up on the bench. And this will be a pretty good indicator of what's to come. Just looking at the pin on the solenoid, if it's clean and not stuck, then we should be okay. Not stuck, but there is a bit of varnish on it. Not too bad. I've seen a lot worse. There's a bit of junk in the bowl. Carb itself looks pretty good. But definitely the smell of stale fuel. So I think I'm just going to run through the jets with a wire on this one. Probably skip the ultrasonic and uh, put it back together. See if the main jet will come out. It's just hanging on by a hair. Hmm. There we go. Main jet's not clogged. The emulsion tube looks really good. And the pilot jet, it's actually really hard to tell very tiny hole right there. Sometimes if you shine the light in on the side, you can see it light up. And in this case, I think I see a sliver. So this carb probably would run like this, but we have it apart. I'll just make sure the jets are clear, spray a little bit of carb cleaner on it and put it back together. I'm not trying to drill the jet out here. I'm just using the largest drill bit that'll fit and using that to kind of make sure the jet is clear.
it's a good idea to test the function of the needle and seat. So when it's upside down like this, the needle should be closed. And while blowing through it, you should hear absolutely nothing. If you hear any air coming past that needle, it's gonna leak. That's perfect. This is the idle set screw, and this generator doesn't idle, so you just want it to poke through a couple threads like that, and that's all you need. Really, the only purpose of it in this application is to hold down that pilot jet. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I think this would have run the engine without being cleaned, but now I think we're that much better off. Anyway, it's nearly in perfect condition, almost new condition, but I did notice an issue. Right there, that is an adjustable jet that has been broken off. So I don't know if that's in a good position. And that, that could cause an issue because that controls or it meters how much fuel goes through that hole right there. So if it's running too lean or too rich, you know, that could be the issue. So maybe that could be slotted and I could use a screwdriver to adjust it at that point. But worst case, I do have extra carbs like this that can be used in its place. All the parts showed up in the mail today. I've laid them out kind of on the bottom here. The old parts are on top. Just wanna make sure everything matches. You know, these were ordered really based on the engine size and the looks of the part and the description. Some of the parts did list several critical dimensions. So I think we're gonna be okay. Uh, this is the new head gasket on the right, the old on the left. And they match perfectly. So we're good there. Push rod retainer, new on the right, old on the left. That is a match. This is the old exhaust push rod. Uh, they did have a couple links. This actually ended up being the shorter of the two choices at six and a half inches. The new push rods on the right. And it's a bit longer. So that could be an issue. Potentially he sent me the longer of the two. Or maybe I didn't measure right. So I will double check that. As far as the valve goes, uh, he provided the dimension of the valve face. So I ordered based on that. And that lines up fine but he did not provide any other dimensions like the diameter of the valve stem. So the older one's 0.25 inches, the new one 0.25 inches. And the length is 3.4. Let's see if I can piece this broken valve together and get a measurement. Three point three nine. So the new valve is fine, and the valve spring retainer fits on the spring well. And this is for an intake valve. They do differ on this generator. The exhaust uses a rotator cap. 
uh, but the intake just latches directly onto the valve. So for the most part, we're looking pretty good. I should be able to put the head back together, reinstall it, but won't be able to test it until I sort this issue out. Just gonna check the fit of this new valve. Yeah, and I can spin it. So it's not making a good seal, but that's expected. So I'm gonna lap this valve in. I'm gonna pause it though. I already showed you how to do it on the exhaust and I'll resume in a second. Got a good line going around that valve, so I think we're all set. Let's just drop it in and make sure. Yeah, perfect. I didn't show you this earlier, but the valve stem seal that goes right there was damaged and is not usable. I didn't order a new part though because I already have some, so we'll give these a try. Hopefully they fit. Yep, that's good. And just take note, the flat side should be facing down. I took a quick look online just to see if I could tell which way is up. And, you know, this is the side that was up on the old one. And of course that one failed. I'm almost 100% sure this side should be up. So that is what I'm gonna go with. And that brings me to the next problem. The intake valve stud has a cut down there on the threads. Not only that, but it is slightly bent. So this cannot be used. Uh, luckily I do have a stud kit from another project and it was a similar sized engine and it looks to be a good replacement. So I'm gonna use this instead. There is some adjustment in this plate. So you just don't want to tighten it down and not think about it. You know, for now I am going to center it the best I can. And when I install the push rods, if I find one is rubbing a little too hard, I might adjust it a bit. In case you're wondering, I don't have a service manual for this engine. Instead, I'm using this Rato service manual. It, they make Honda clones 
and they have instructions here for the 420 cc honda clone that they build and you know the clones as well as the hondas the specs are very similar so this is all i have to go on and in this case they say the rocker shaft bolt should be 24 newton meters which is 212 inch pounds so that's more than i usually tighten these two so i'm going to start at 120 inch pounds and then go from there Two hundred twelve, it is. So according to the manual, the Rato manual, this should be brought up to 40 Newton meters, and that's about 29 foot-pounds. So I've already snugged them up. I'm going to bring it up to 20 foot-pounds and then finish it at 29. I double checked and these are the short push rods. They were advertised as six and a half inches, which is what I wanted, but they are a tenth of an inch longer than six and a half. That said, the other set of push rods I could have got were 6.87 inches, which would not have been close. So I don't think a tenth of an inch is gonna matter too much. So I'm gonna give these a try. You know, worst case, I can swap them out.
Yeah, I think these push rods will be fine. Feels pretty good. I'm just gonna rotate the engine, double check it. Yeah, it's not too bad. Let's try a seven. Seven doesn't fit. So the intake is good. Eight feels pretty good. Yep, eight is good. Let's try a nine. Does not fit. So those are set to six and eight. There is actually a spec on this, 88 inch pounds. Which is about right there. Back here again. I thought I was done with the valves and I, I was until I did a little more digging online. I, this plate was bugging me and I did finally find a couple of pictures of how this is supposed to be and the way it originally was with the the raised side up is actually correct so I'm gonna put it back in the correct way redo the valves and pretend like it never happened okay good back to where I was so there's not much left to do now really other than connect the exhaust get some of the cooling tins on and the carburetor but before I do any of that I want to get some oil back in this engine.
I don't think that's going to be an issue. The way this works is when the choke's out, the choke is locked in place. But when the engine starts, this is actually spring-loaded. So it's going to flap and kind of turn the choke off, sort of, until you actually turn it off. And once you do that, there's actually a servo right here. It's vacuum controlled, and that'll turn it off the rest of the way. So I think we're good. All right, let's give this a quick try. I've got the light connected and the circuit breaker turned on as well as the ignition. So I'm going to fire this up. We've got a bit of fuel in the tank. Uh, let's see what this thing does. Overall, not too bad. The engine sounded good and it makes power, but there are a couple concerns. I guess first off, the engine was rattling quite a bit. I thought there might be an issue there, but now that it's off, I was kind of poking around trying to find what that noise was. And I think it was just this handle that was rattling around. There's two of them that slide into the frame. So that is not an issue. The engine speed and the voltage was a bit low. So I think if I bump the engine speed up closer to 61 and a half hertz, that voltage should come up as well. I don't think this one has an AVR. The more serious issue I saw when trying to start this engine, it was pumping and backfiring out of that carburetor. And there's only a few reasons I can think of that would cause that. Timing, weak spark, potentially a lean mixture on that carburetor or a valve issue. And pretty much all those things would still continue when the engine is up to speed. But once the engine was up to speed, that backfiring went away. So that pretty much eliminates almost all those things. Really the only two things left I can think of are both valve related. And being that I replaced a broken valve, I think that is most likely the cause here. So I would say either the compression release is overly aggressive and it's letting out too much compression or potentially the leak down is really bad. But I don't, I don't think that's the case because when I pull the engine over, I mean, I could hook up the leak down tester and find out for sure. But right now I'm on the compression stroke and the engine holds pretty steady. You know, I have to pull quite a bit harder to get it to advance. So that actually has minimal leak down. I don't think that's the issue. Most likely it has something to do with the compression release. So before I hook up the compression tester, I'm just gonna try starting it again. I wanna make sure it's a consistent problem and then I'll get the compression tester on there, see where we're at, and then try adjusting the valves again 
to improve the situation. Well, whatever it was, it's not doing it anymore, but I still want to check the compression. So we'll get the compression tester on there and see where we're at. Usually I see about 60 PSI on engines this size, with a compression release. You know, it can be plus or minus about five PSI. So uh, let's see where it's at. It's not too bad. It's at 50 PSI. Now that is a bit low. Ideally it would be 60. The only way to combat that really is to adjust the exhaust valve and increase the clearance. So right now I'm at eight thousandths of an inch. The spec is eight thousand plus or minus about a thousandth. So I can go up to nine thousandths and that should bring this up a bit more. So let's give that a try. Just double checking the clearance. Should be eight thousandths and eight thousandths is not fitting. So we'll try seven. Nope. About six. No. So that exhaust valve is actually too tight and that's why the compression is low. So I'm going to readjust that and I guess I'll double check the intake as well. All right, that's good. The eight fits just fine. The nine barely fits, a lot of friction. So I'd say it's somewhere in between. Uh, I'll double check the intake while I'm here. That should be at six thousandths. Six is fine. Seven does not fit, so intake is good. Yeah, that's, that's more like it. I'd say we're at 55, and that's good. I mean, the 60 PSI, that's kind of the ideal scenario, but plus or minus 5 PSI is fine. So I think we're good. Get that cover back on and get this thing outside for a test. So it occurs to me, I didn't really explain why this made a difference. The decompression system on this works by bumping the exhaust valve when the engine's spinning slow, just to let out a bit of compression, making it easier to start the engine. But if you let out too much compression, it's actually going to do the opposite. It's going to be hard or impossible 
to start that engine. Let me just rotate the engine to show you what I'm talking about. So there the exhaust valve is open. Keep going. Now the intake's open. When the intake closes, that's the compression stroke right here. If I keep pulling it, you'll see the exhaust valve just move a tiny bit right there. And that is the compression release. So if this valve is too tight, then it's going to let out too much compression. And if it's too loose, it's actually going to keep too much in and make it hard to start. So it's a very small window in order to get that compression release PSI correct. And at 55, that's still on the low side of what I'd consider okay, but it should be fine. Alternatively, I could bump this up to 9 thousandths. I'd still be in spec and even a bit closer to 60, but you know, 55, that's not going to cause an issue. All right, I think we're ready to go. I've got the kilowatt hooked up and two space heaters. I'm gonna use the breakout cord on the 240 outlet to power the space heaters. Leg one is blue and leg two is red. So I've got one space heater on each leg to balance the load. But before I load it up, I'm just gonna let it warm up a bit. I'm gonna test each of these outlets, make sure they work, and probably double check the voltage on the DC side of things, make sure that's working as well. Yeah, it's still having issues. Let's try it again.
All right. Not too bad. I mean, the engine sounds good. The first time I tried starting it, it was pumping out of that carburetor again. So there is something not quite right, but the second start attempt, things started and sounded fine. You know, the voltage was at about 117 volts once I brought the engine speed up and 61 hertz without a load. I then put 3000 watts on the generator and things held pretty much perfect. The voltage actually came up closer to 120 volts and the engine was right at 60 hertz. So I then added another 1500 watts for good measure and things kept running pretty well. I mean, the engine was a little unsteady, but without the airbox on, that is to be expected. And applying a bit of choke took care of that issue. So I'm not too concerned about that. It's really just that backfiring. That is not a normal thing. So I'm going to try restarting it right now one more time while the engine's hot and see what happens. Try it again. ran out of gas, but that's okay. I've got what I needed. You know, starting it, even when the engine's been warmed up, is no easier. It's hard to start, and it is popping out of the carburetor. So at this point, I'm leaning away from the valves as being the issue. I know leak down is minimal, the compression is good, and the valves are adjusted perfectly. So I don't think that's it. Really, the only other thing that can cause this is spark. You know, this engine actually sparks twice, once on the compression stroke and once on the exhaust stroke. And on the exhaust stroke, it is actually sparking right at the end of the exhaust stroke in the beginning of the intake. So at that point, both valves are open. And the first time I tried starting this, it was backfiring not only out of the carb, but out of the exhaust. So now I'm thinking spark. So let me swap that plug out real quick. Try it again see if there's a different result. Try it one more time.
Who would have guessed? It was a bad plug. You know, the one I pulled out of there doesn't look bad. You know, I double checked the gap. Everything is fine, but you can't argue with the result. It's now starting first pull every time. No more backfiring. So I might have been a little bit too quick to assume it was the valves. I mean, it had a broken valve, so my assumption was I did something wrong with the valves. But not the case. It's just a bad plug. Anyway, the plug I threw in there, it's not exactly the right one for this engine, so I'm going to place an order to get the correct part. And while waiting for that, I'll just get this back inside, put it together pretty much all the way, and then just swap out that plug when I get it. New spark plug showed up today. It is an NGK BPR 5ES. Always double check the gap. That looks pretty good. I want to make sure that new plug works as well as the one I took out of there. So let's give this a really cold, cold start and see how it does.
overall, not too bad. It started both times, second pull, no popping out of the intake or the exhaust. So I think the plug I pulled out did a little bit better job starting the engine, but to be fair, it is a really cold day out. So I'm sure it'll be easier to start on a nicer day. Anyway, this thing is done. You know, it's making power, engine sounds good. And overall the repair wasn't too bad. I would say about 45, maybe $50 in total in parts to get this thing back up and running again. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.